So now in this final video on development and human development specifically, we'll entitle this last flowchart Human Development 3. And here we're just going to end the development. We're going to uh, have the second trimester, third trimester, birthday, and complete this uh, nine-month pregnancy that we see within humans. So let's begin where we left off. We ended the first trimester by looking at maternal and embryonic changes. So now let's begin the second trimester. The second trimester is from four to six months. And again, the point at which we start this counting of months and days or whatever it may be is from the moment of fertilization where sperm meets egg, you have karyogamy, you have successfully done that process and thus you have begun the possible pregnancy. So second trimester, uh, again, like I said, first trimester was about creating those organs and doing organogenesis in the embryonic sort of realm. Now it's just about growing, lots of growth is involved in the second trimester. Um, there's going to now be actually uh, so much growth that you begin to get an active fetus. Remember, we have a fetus now because eight weeks has passed, majority of organogenesis has happened, and thus it's a fetus, no longer an embryo. So this developing fetus actually is going to be active, meaning that this is usually the time in which the mother um, can very often feel the fetal movement. And that's a, a characteristic sign of a successful entry into the second trimester of pregnancy. So the mother feels the fetal movements because the fetus is active. And in addition, this is when you have a noticeably a large, uh, enlarged uterus. And this is going to uh, sort of tell you that um, the person is uh, quite obviously uh, or quite visibly pregnant at this time. So an obvious and visible pregnancy will show up around the second trimester. Much harder to tell if somebody's pregnant during the first trimester, but about at the time of the second trimester, it becomes quite obvious or visible that a pregnancy is certainly uh, happening within the female. Now, next is the third trimester, and we'll do that down here. The third trimester, which is our final trimester, ranges from months seven to nine. So it's seven to nine months after fertilization. And occurring here is even more growth. So again, we did the, we've done the organogenesis. Now it's just about growing and developing a little bit further, even more growth. Um, the growth is going to continue uh, up until the fetus actually fills up the entire space. The fetus fills up um, all the space, all space of membranes. So the membranes were once there to you know, help develop the organism, help develop the fetus. Now the fetus is grown to a size in which it's encompassed uh, or filled up the entire area that the membranes served. And thus, it means that it's getting less reliant on those membranes and more sort of edging towards being uh, expelled, being born essentially here. So that's our sort of extreme, uh, not extreme, but increased amount of growth during the third trimester. In addition, the third trimester usually involves the final tissue and organ differentiation. You're basically becoming a very viable organism at this time. You are ensuring that upon birth, your tissue systems, your organ systems are in check and can work independently and successfully away from the mother, not within this placental, let's say, transfer system. In addition, the third trimester is a point at which we can establish the fact that prematurity may happen. So we may have a premature birth. This is characterized as an organ, as a human being born before 37 weeks. That's the time that consists that that causes or is is going to be labeled as a premature birth. Whereas a full-term fetus is something that is not premature. A full-term fetus is going to be any uh, fetus that is born after 37 weeks. So before 37 weeks, premature. After 37 weeks, full-term. And usually what we see on average, and this varies a lot, but on average it's about 6.6 .6 pounds at birth. Um, uh, the baby that is, and the baby is about 20 inches in length. So those are our averages. Again, they vary 
quite greatly depending on you know the mother depending on the environment a lot of other things so this is just a good average number to keep in your mind so that's our third trimester and here we are finally concluding with now the birthday the birthday not one word but two words in this situation the birthday occurs after about 266 days of development it occurs after about 38 weeks of development. It occurs after about nine months after the fertilization. All of these are, mean the same thing, um, but just to reiterate, know the terms of, know the numbers of nine months, 38 weeks, 266 days. That's a sign, or those are signals of the final sort of events of human development. So, what happens on the birthday? The birthday is when you have childbirth, and childbirth begins with labor. So this process of childbirth it's going to begin and it sort of induces itself on the mother uh, with a state known as labor. So um, the mother goes into labor. Many of us have heard this before but we don't really understand the actual mechanisms associated with going into labor. So when a mother has, go has gone into labor childbirth has begun. This would mean that she is undergoing rhythmic uh, uterine contractions. So these contractions are happening uh, at an increased rate. They usually start at a slower rate and get faster and faster. And these contractions are very noticeable. These contractions are um, some of the most unique feelings that this individual will ever have in their life. And thus it's a very obvious sign that birth is about to happen. Purpose of the contractions is simple. The idea right now is to push the fetus, to push the fetus and the placenta also, because this is a structure no longer needed that needs to be expelled out of body. It is time for birth, and thus you're going to utilize contractions, rhythmic uterine contractions, um, for this birth process. Now, again, this is not just going to happen on its own, much like many things within the body, hormones are going to guide the child birthing process. So hormones guide this. Specific hormones of interest would be things like prostaglandins, also uh, estradiol is going to be a hormone that's going to be involved in the birth process, and also very famously oxytocin. Oxytocin is directly involved in this rhythmic uterine contractions, much like prostaglandins and estradiol, but this is the famous one because of that positive feedback loop that you want. You want these rhythmic contractions to get stronger and stronger and stronger, and oxytocin follows up positive feedback loop to induce that process. For these hormones, take a look at figure 46.18 to see their individual effects on the childbirth process. And then finally, we'll conclude this lecture with the three stages of labor. So now we have induced labor, we have these rhythmic contractions, hormones are guiding the process. First stage of labor is known as dilation. Dilation is going to be when the cervix which was initially thickened with mucus, it actually thins, okay? The cervix thins and it opens up. It opens itself up for the expulsion of the fetus. So that's our first step of labor. Then after dilation, you have delivery. Delivery consists of the expulsion of the infant, of the baby. Expulsion of baby and that is the technical term that we're going to use here expulsion and then finally the last stage of labor is placental delivery and that's going to be um, when the placenta exits the body simple as that and that's it that covers the childbirth um, and just one more thing we sort of can put on the side is uh, the idea of postnatal care postnatal care will involve something like lactation so again, we are mammals as humans. Just put this on the side box here. Uh, and after birth, the fetus will, the, the fetus and no longer, it's actually the baby now, the infant now, will very much require the need, uh, need the mother for postnatal care. And the exact need can be summarized in the idea of lactation, the need to feed the child uh, the breast milk so that they can develop externally successfully just like they did develop successfully internally. 
Overall, we've completed this lecture. It's a very long lecture with many details and content heavy. Hopefully through this you've seen that development is a very complex process. I'm sure you appreciate it after these long drawn out videos. Thank you for watching them. Uh, I understand this is a very long lecture as compared to others, um, but hopefully again you've gained a greater appreciation for this process. It's a very powerful idea to understand development and hopefully you've gained that through these videos and flowcharts.